Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back, we're live. We're here with Dennis Wong of the Sea Grant College at UH Manoa. And we're gonna talk about eruptions. As a matter of fact, the title of the show is uh, Update, uh, Eruption Update uh, from the uh, UH Sea Grant College. We're gonna find out stuff that he is working on, uh, sure. an update of his book. We should talk about his book and we're talking about what, he, what we may have learned over the past few weeks on the eruption going on on the Big Island. Welcome to the show, Dennis. Okay, well, it's good to be back. Yeah. Uh, this is actually our fourth time on the show. Yeah, so. you're, well, you're a regular. You well, should be a regular. Uh, I don't know. Because we have to follow <laughs> what you're doing and learning. You are our, you're our guru as far as earthquakes are concerned. Well, yeah, okay. and, and hence the book. The book is called hmm, Homeowner's Handbook to Prepare for Natural Hazards. And I think what you mean by that is earthquakes, huh? Well, if you look at the back of the book, yeah. the main ones we're covering are tsunamis. Yeah, look, you can like read that. Revenue. Tsunamis, hurricanes, earthquakes, and floods, all of that. Yeah. Right. And um, uh, this is uh, the book you're holding is a interim update. We, want, we tried to get something out before that could be used for this hurricane season, but we're doing a full update, which would be version four, and it also have volcanoes and climate change in those uh, uh, hazards that we're gonna cover. Okay. So refresh us on what's in the book. Okay. So, you know, I wanna have this book handy with me. Yes. I wanna look at this book before the event, not, not at the moment of the event. That's right. <laughs> I wanna prepare. This is a book about preparation. In fact, it says that, Homeowner's Handbook to Prepare for Natural Hazards. That's right. Well, okay, so what's in here is, um, in the first part, we give a, a scientific explanation, but we explain it for the layperson uh, what the different hazards are about. So we'll explain hurricanes and tsunamis, you know, and we'll give some information on the geographical um, uh, extent of the different hazards, okay? And then in uh, the next part of the book, we cover emergency supplies and evacuation planning. Very important, people have an evacuation plan and they, it's not as simple as just, a lot of literature will say make a plan, but it's a lot more involved in that. I mean, people should, people should know the difference between tsunami evacuation and hurricane evacuation. Oh, sure, yeah, so yes. different for the different risks. And, so that, let's go back and, and now volcano evacuation too, right? Yeah, yeah, all different. Yeah. Let's go back for a minute though, the supplies. I, yeah. I really want to dwell on that for a minute. Sure. By the way, I, I just watched this movie called The Way It Ends. Okay. And it doesn't end. But it's a story about a huge seismic event in, in Seattle. Oh, okay. Works. And uh, it's about a, the story of trying to get to Seattle to save somebody. And it's very realistic. And I mean, you would love it because I know you think about these things. It's about seismic events and it's about saving people. And okay. it's realistic. The way it ends, it's on uh, Netflix now. Okay, I'll have to watch yeah, that. you will. Okay, so anyway, so uh, if I'm fixing my, my cupboard, yeah, you know, and I'm going down to Costco or wherever I go. Right. Um, you know, what do I need to be thinking about to to prepare at least to to get supplies okay. for one of these possibilities? Okay, well, the standard now is um, 14 days of non-perishable food and water, and I I um, give some tips. We put some tips in the book. So, for example, non-perishable food. Personally, I never put things in my kit that I'm not gonna use or they're gonna expire. I usually put things out of a long shelf life, like three or four years. And I also, if you look at some of the food that you buy, it'll have very fine print, very difficult to read, and especially have some um, some supplies. So what I, when I, as soon as I buy it, I'll take a Sharpie and I'll put the month and date uh, and year it was bought and then mm, put it at the bottom. Idea, yeah. yeah. In terms of water, you're supposed to have um, two weeks supply, 14 days of water per person. So a family of four is supposed to have 56 gallons of water. You go to Costco or Sam's Club and buy a case of water, there's five or six gallons in that case. So 
you would really need 11, ga 11 cases, which is hard for the average homeowner to, to do. Is this drinking, washing, or both? Both. But uh, the point is, um, what I do is, and what we recommend is you, you know, buy your water in the cases as much as you need, but also supplement it with other things. You should make sure, like, you could use garbage cans as uh, to s store water, and Amazon sells these things, these plastic liners called water bobs. You could put them in your bathtub, and they hold 100 gallons of water at a time. Do you, you just close them up, or it remains open? It's closed and uh, perfectly sanitary. It remains folded, and then if there's an incoming event, you just fill that, put it in your oh, bathtub yeah, and fill good. it up. Where, where yeah. is that now, Costco, you say? Amazon. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah. And there are several makes of it, and there are really a lot of different products you could get to store water. So the, the uh, probably one thing... I mean, there's a lot of lists, so take a look at the list. The other thing I just want to mention is medication. You know, if you're on medication, make sure you have like an extra 30-day supply during hurricane season. Yeah. Yeah, God, I, you know, we hate to think of these things. We, yeah. we hate to contemplate the possibility of a 30-day hiatus that way. Yes, but you know, I think um, with the volcano, and we'll talk about that shortly, and a lot of people have a lot of interest about the volcano now. Um, it's on the news, and um, but that teaches us a lesson because these things can happen. I'm going to show you some pictures of that area before the eruption started, and you would look at it and you would think, no one would think that there there location, their house would be under 20 feet of lava two weeks later, you know? So these things will happen, especially if scientists indicate there's a risk, and scientists will generally know when there's a risk, then people should listen. They should listen. Yes. Yeah, just a footnote on uh, Sea Grant College. Sea Grant College is all about this kind of thing. And yes. this book is a product of Sea Grant College. That's right. The Sea Grant College does things like this book. That's right. You sell them or give them away? Uh, they're for free. So um, there are 25 partners in the book, and um, they support the book. They make contributions. They allow us to print. And we've gone through nine print runs with 75,000 copies for this book. Yeah. And then. It's um, real public service to do yes. this. And real actually, this, is amazing. Th this one just got printed. A week ago, this is version 3.2, this is our interim update for this hurricane season, and this was actually paid by one of our partners, Coastal Zone Management Program. But uh, as funds become available from the different partners, they contribute and we print the book out. Tremendous public service, consistent yeah. with the, you know, the recognized obligation of the university to do public service sure. for the community. This is yeah. a very valuable piece, and it's hard to find this information just looking around, that's just focused. Th that's right. We try. That's the purpose of the book. Is there's so much information out there, we try and filter it out. What's most relevant to the homeowner? Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's start on our our uh, that part of the show which deals with with the volcano and the okay, eruption. Okay, sure. You have some pictures here, huh? Sure. So um, let's. Why don't we just start? Maybe we could take a look at some of these pictures. And we're there on this little stand. Okay, so. Uh, you could get your main information for the volcano from the USGS um, Hawaii Volcano website. Okay, so this is a, a, a picture of, um, you can see on the lower corner, there's the Big Island, there's Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and the East Rift Zone, and then there's a little box on the southeast tip of the Big Island. That is uh, the East Rift Zone and the area where there's a lot of volcanic activity. What you see in purple are historic flows. So there's an 1840 flow, and then there's a, um, see where it says Vacation Land Hawaii? Uh, below, above it, there's a 1960 flow, and below it, there's a 1955 flow. Again, like we mentioned, scientists can tell you when there's going to be risk, and it would be expected that there would be some risk from uh, volcanoes. And the last thing I want to point out, all the red is 
lava flows that have occurred at, after May 3rd. This year. Of this year. So, and that, um, you can see where it says Vacation Land Hawaii. If you look closely, you'll see the outline of the coast. The lava has gone a mile past the shoreline in that location. And there are a lot of houses that used to be there. Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah. would things in this book have helped the people? Well, it would have. Um, the key thing is there's not a lot you could do for lava. I mean, um, there, another component of the book is how do you make your house strong, and there's nothing you could do for lava. So, um, but it would have helped in terms of them um, helping to make them have an evacuation plan, because everybody should have an evacuation plan for the different hazards, whether it be a tsunami, hurricane, or lava, especially if you're on the Big Island or Maui, right? Let's talk about lava for a minute, just sure. a minute. What, how does that plan differ from, from flooding, uh, from earthquake, from hurricane? How does that plan differ? Okay, it's, um, it's, it's gonna be different. They're going to have some warning. I mean, there's some hazards that they're going to give you warning, like a hurricane. Probably a lava will be similar to that. You'll have advance notice. And the key is to listen to your um, emergency management or civil defense agencies, OK? You should also, as part of, of your evacuation plan, have an evacuation kit where everything that you need to uh, sustain yourself for a period of time is in that kit. and, it's, and, car, and also your important documents, okay? Um, mm. For some hazards, there's gonna be very little warning. One, an earthquake, two, uh, a tsunami. And those are, in the book, we do have evacuation planning in chapter three of the book. And um, for an earthquake, you drop, drop to the floor, go under a table or to cover up, and hold on, and then after the shaking stops, you leave the building. And um, for a tsunami, everyone should know, especially for a local tsunami, uh, if the shaking is strong enough that you can't stand, you should move upland, inland, okay? So those are the key things, and they're all in the book. Mm. Yeah. You want to keep them in your head, though, yes. in case anything happens quickly. That's know? right, so should we? Yeah, let's go to the next picture. Okay. Okay, so uh, what we have here is Leilani Estates. And along the East Rift, uh, Rift Zone, there are, I think there are like 27 fishers. Uh, uh, not all of them are active. And the big one is Fisher 8, where all the steam is coming out right now. And then just to the, um, to the left in that picture, you'll see 9, 10, 11, or 12. But th those are no longer really active, just steam coming out. But that is um, where most of the lava is coming out and um, impacting Leilani states and then flowing to the coastline and eventually reach Kapo Kapoho, and it's migrating also to the south. So is this like the movies when you see the fissure coming at you, you see the two halves separating, you see a chasm growing between, <laughs> and then you look down and you see something red and glowing, and it's coming up from the bowels of the earth and it's coming at you? Is that what it looks like, this fissure so, business? Somewhat, and um, I think we'll, sh we'll, we'll show you, because I have, actually have a picture from the air. Don't show me yet. Okay. We're gonna make a cliffhanger out of it. Literally, <laughs> literally a cliffhanger. Okay. We're gonna take a short break and come back, and we're gonna see this fissure, and we're gonna see the, the problems. Okay, sure. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel, one of the hosts of Asia in Review, which is broadcast Monday afternoons on thinktechhawaii.com. We cover, we study news and politics in and affecting Asia. We work hard to bring you the most interesting subjects and guests who will raise your awareness. Please join us Mondays every week on Asia in Review on thinktechhawaii.com and also on YouTube and iTunes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Aloha, she she, and saijian. Aloha, I'm Jay Fardell, founder of Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm Andrea Gabrielli, the host for Young Talents Making Way. Wait a minute, this is not a new, a new episode, is it, Jay? No, it's not a new episode. Um, you know, that show is over, Andrea. So uh, what are you going to do now? 
Hmm, why don't we have a summer edition of Young Talents Making Way, where we focus more on education as a mean for our young talents to max out, become role models, and achieve their dreams. What a great idea. So when do you want to begin, Andrea? July the 3rd, 2018, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Young Talents Making Way, summer edition. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. We're back with Dennis Wong of the Sea Grant College, and we're talking, we're doing an update on the eruption. We're learning. We're okay. always learning. Sea Grant is always learning. Okay, you had some pictures about fissures. Okay, well, let's, let's look at some of these, okay? So, um, the first one here, it's just a house in Leilani Estates, and you can see this house is right near Fisher 8, and um, there are some houses that are just at the border of this flow that are that apparently okay, but even then there's a question of whether they'll be functional after the oh, after sure. the event because the infrastructure is impacted. There's no electricity. Yeah. The roads are blocked. Some houses there's steam coming out of the house. But take a look at this house because it actually has a green roof if you go out there. Because I go to the next picture. Okay, here's your Fisher, Jay. Fisher 8, uh, going through Leilani Estates, and you um, could actually see that house, that greenhouse. I'm going to point to it with this. Oh, it's right. Okay, it's right here. Right there. That's uh -huh. the greenhouse okay. that you saw in the picture before. Uh -huh. And you could see the lava coming out of the Fisher and flow, it's actually flowing like over 20 miles an hour. You can't a, outrun that. No, that's right. And it's very, um, it's very spectacular. It glows like that. You could see it glowing like that during the day, and then at nighttime, it's really spectacular. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That must be terrifying if you're anywhere near it, because you don't know exactly where it's going to go. That's right. And what's um, astounding is, and really h hard, for people is, let's see, okay, well, I don't have it here, but it's, it, the fissures open right up in the middle of a subdivision. So it's like, you know. It's like the movies. Right, <laughs> that's right. That's can, right. Can, is there a warning? I mean, you see, you know, like no crack, and then a little crack, and then a bigger crack? There is, right war there was warning. I mean, this is Fisher 8, so they number them. The first one, Fisher 1, 2, th so this is all, uh, it all started May 3rd, okay? And, um, you know, the fissures open up, uh, different ones open up each day and they give it a number. They're now, I think they're now 27, but it went to 27 and then eight become the, wound up becoming the most active, okay? So there is warning, always listen to your civil defense and emergency management yeah. and always have an evacuation plan yeah, well, and, I, and, I want to get out of there sooner than later. Yeah, and then also the other thing is insurance, too. Yeah, that's that. Well, you can't get insurance once the thing, once the eruption starts. Right, right. But let me ask you this, though. You said that eight was wor worse than seven, six, five, four, and so on. Yeah. Is it, am I right to conclude that, that at least in through eight, it was getting worse? It's been getting more violent, yeah? Yeah, um, it, what, it's been flowing once it, once the lava started going through eight, and you should really check with USGS on this, but it, it appears that the flow has been going much stronger uh, than before when it was going through the other fissures. Okay, wow. and also the earthquake activity, because you're looking at two things now, and this is where we could really make a difference, is the lava, is happening in nearly lighting estates in these fissures, but a lot of the earthquake act activity is happening back in Volcano Village, Kilauea, and there's still, while the Volcano uh, Visitor Center is closed, there's still people living in Volcano Village and exactly. they're subject to earthquakes like magnitude fives almost every day. Oh. And it's very, I was gonna show a video and actually um, if people, when they Google the homeowner's handbook to prepare for natural hazards and go, or go to the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program and Google it, and they go to the handbook website, 
we have four files on post and peer, the, um, and we're going to cover that shortly. But um, one of them is a video, and it'll sh by by this engineering department at University of Hawaii, and it shows what happens when houses on these post and peer structures are subject to continued earthquake shaking. Hey, well, that's directly in line with your preparations here that's in right. the book. That's right. Right, because so, a major part, a major part is strengthening homes for the different hazards. Not a lot we could do for lava, but there is a lot we could do for earthquakes. And that's the, the um, thanks for inviting us, because we really want people on the Big Island to start thinking about this and actually start even if they can start doing it right now. You know. Yeah, because the reality is this is. It's a, it's, a, it's a sine curve. It's going to repeat. It's going to loop. Yeah. What's going to happen is, okay, if things will settle down, some people will leave, other people won't leave, and, and then uh, there will still be a neighborhood of some kind there, and people will build new houses because insurance yeah. companies will insure them and mortgagees will finance them. Yeah. And, um, and then at the end of the day, this will happen again. Yeah. But, well, I mean, don't you think? Not right away, but over time. It will happen again, but the thing, too, is... No one knows how long this eruption is going to last. It could last another week. It could last another three months. Could it last it another could five la years? It could last. It could. Uh, I mean, you, you could talk with the USGS, and uh, we actually are doing a volcano section for the handbook, and we're working with the USGS. But no one really knows how long this volcano will last. And as long as the lava keeps coming out, there's still going to be earthquakes, and all of these earthquakes over time are going to affect these buildings. So yeah. maybe we should yeah. go oh, on here. Yeah. And lava bombs, too. That's we, right. We didn't really focus on lava bombs until it happened on that boat out there. That's right. But that's pretty serious, a lava bomb. It's really a bomb, too. It is, <laughs> It's because the super hot lava hitting the water. And actually, on the next picture, you'll see exactly that, because this is what's happening. OK, okay so uh, this is the lava traveling I think six or seven or eight miles to the coastline, and at, it's at a it, speed of twenty miles an hour. Yes, and it's changed past. This is Kapoho uh, Bay, okay, and you can see the lava uh, hitting the, the the coastline here. Um, now, since this, since uh, the lava started flowing, the shoreline has migrated over a mile. Ocean. The lava has built it up a mile. Yeah, it's it's gone out a mile. Okay. And here, let's go through another picture. Here is what Kapoho looked like five days before the eruption. I, we went out there five days before the eruption to photograph it. The reason was we had really did a study in the area 12 years ago to study subsidence. And the area was subsiding like one centimeter a year. And we were studying it for. Does this tell you anything? Yeah, well, it's very un unstable, right? But you could see these these um, these houses because that was May twenty. No, that was April twenty eighth, five days before the eruption. And then you could see these are the same houses. Now the lava has reached these houses like two or three or four. I don't I don't know the exact date of this photo, but this is like online on the website. It's on like a lot of TV shows, but you could see how, um, how the impact is. And again, what we're trying to get across is scientists pretty much can predict where the risks are. And you know, when scientists say there's a risk, people, everyone should listen, homeowners, planners, and... Um, well, let know. me ask you this, Dennis. I mean, if scientists can predict the risks... Somewhat. Somewhat. It depends, and it depends on the hazard itself, sure, too. Sure, sure, of course. Yeah. And you can, and, and a lot of the prediction is based on what happened before. Yeah. It's historic. That's right. If you look at what happened before, you can figure out where the risk is now. So if I have a house, okay, yeah. like, just like uh, there at Paho, and, um, and the lava comes and, uh, you know, destroys the house, it, it buries it and or burns what's, what's not buried, mm -hmm. okay, and then, and then it stops. Then the eruption's over. And I go back six months, eight months, 10 months, 12 months later, and I say, well, it's my land, <laughs> for better or worse. I want to build another house. Is this advisable? Because historically, the lava came right down that channel. Yeah. Or, or am I being silly? Well, yeah, it is. 
it is a risky area. Um, I'm not going to get too much into who could build it or who, who cannot, and even who owns the land because it's not really settled. It's not settled. Who, yeah, no. You know, supposedly when a, there's a lava flow, uh, according to old common law cases, it's like um, the state owns the lava. But but that's you get what's under it. <laughs> yeah, but but the point is, I mean, do you really want to take that risk? No, um, the issue is raised for sure. And, and it's like um, um, there are lava flow maps that put out by the USGS. So this area is in uh, the, the highest lava flow risk. Yeah, yeah in the whole state. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, because uh, in terms of lava. The, and earthquakes, the greatest risk is the southern part of the Big Island, and then the northern part of the Big Island, then Maui, and, you know, because just the way the Hawaiian Islands are formed, being over a hot spot geologically. Yeah. yeah. Got more pictures? Sure. So, okay, so what we could really make a difference is, um, uh, earthquake activity. So there's a lot of people in Volcano Village that are seeing impacts and damages from earthquakes. Like they're, some parts of their wall are starting to separate. And you don't and, have to be in a lava flow to have an earthquake. Right. You could be fairly removed and remote from the right. actual lava. Right. And so this is a report on a post and pier structure by two structural engineers, one Ian Robertson at the University of Hawaii, and another by Gary Chalk, is also a structural engineer. So they did this report in 2009, and it's 75% of the, roughly 75% of the houses in Volcano Village are on Post and Pier, and they're getting magnitude five earthquakes almost every day. And like I said, on our website, we have a video that shows what happens when these post and pier structures are subject to repeated. What happens? They start, they come, they come off their post. They might just they, shear the post right off. Well, what, what happens, yeah, let's see if we could see on the next one. Okay, see, on the upper left picture, okay, that's a post and pier structure. So there's a big, concrete block, and then there's a smaller to concrete block, which they call the tofu block. And then above that, there's a termite pan, and above that, there's the post to the house. And there's no connection between any of those elements. It's just held Slide by friction. Right so when the house starts shaking, the thing starts going like this, and eventually it migrates right off the block. And then once it comes up, then the the house, to, there's Still a lot of structural stable. damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, there's a way to retrofit it, it, and it was described in that 2009 report, and then we did a demonstration project for Pearl City, because it's even easier to do it now with all these new products and connectors. I'm not gonna go into that, but it's the demonstration project is also on our website. And we encourage people on the Big Island to consider doing these retrofits. Don't, the, the only difference of between Oahu and the Big Island is well, Big Island's on a greater seismic zone, so they may have to build shear walls also on the corners, but they do the same thing with the post and pier retrofit. Yeah, earthquake can happen anywhere in the state. Right, but the eruption the, is mostly limited to the Big Island, but earthquakes can be anywhere. Yeah, that, that's that's true. But the uh, greatest earthquake risk is on the Big Island. Yeah. Okay. Ra okay. Now, what's the mechanics? Oh, look, here's a ex perfect okay, let's example. Look at this. Yeah. Okay. So this is a house in Volcano Village, and you can see the post and pier structure with the post just sitting on that termite pan, the tofu block, and the concrete block. It's just held by friction. And, you know, if there are all these repeated, say there's earthquakes for another five years, you know? So that's why I'm saying, we're saying that people, they should consider doing some of these retrofits as soon as possible. So what's the retrofit involved? I mean, what? Let's go to the next page. Okay, so um, you could, there are all these different hold downs. And what, um, let's see if I can point to some of this. Okay, so, um, what it is, is you build, there. you take a two by fours and you scab the space in between the post and the tofu block. 
so that they're flush. Mm. And then you take the hole down and attach it to the uh, two by four and the post, and you, dr and you uh, drill holes into the hole down into the concrete foundation. That's what it is. I could do this. Yes. Uh, I, and and I, this is cheap. The materials are cheap. Nearly yes. nothing. Yes. We do recommend that before they start, they see a licensed structural engineer. So there are a few, there are a few in Hawaii County already, and they should also contact the Structural Engineers Association. Once they do that, they could either, once they have the proper direction, they could do, either do that themselves for some of the retrofits or hire a contractor to do that. Okay, but it's not complicated. This one's not complicated. Yes. It's, it, this Pearl City house was not done by a contractor. Okay. So let's make this the last one because we're almost out of time. For Okay. What, what do you want to show on this one? Okay, I'm just, um, I just want to explain to people the concept of a continuous load path, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is essentially tying the roof to the wall, and then the second floor is connected to the first floor, and the first floor is connected to the foundation. So it's almost like you take a chain and throw it over the roof of the house and tie it down. But instead of the chain, which is external, it's all internal by the building codes. So that, um, that, um, that previous example with the post and pier for the uh, single wall house, that was one part of a continuous load path because tying the house to the foundation. And then for a single wall house, all you would do is tie the roof to the wall. Okay, so if I, and that's in that on the handbook also. Yeah, you have drawings. Yeah, and uh, you show you show the uh, the devices that are that are suggested. Yeah, but but um, you know I, I I take it from what you say and from the fact that um, these these things are available um, that um, they reduce your risk substantially of having the house come off the posts. Yes, or having the house uh, somehow shear and. And you know, and fall down in an earthquake. Yeah. Yes, very, very substantially. That's take a look at the video. It's only like ten minutes long. Yeah. Okay, because there's a, a lab example of what happens when there's seismic shaking and there's no retrofit, and then when they do the full retrofit, there's like no damage at Big all. Big difference. Big difference. And then also the same thing with um, the, uh, so all the other measures. You know, hurricane clips. We want. And the reason I, I, I mentioned the load path and uh, hurricanes and earthquakes, it's because the mitigation is the same for both of them. For an earthquake, you reduce damage by making sure you know, your roof is connected to the foundation and the foundation strong. That's why we talk, I'm concentrating on the post and pier because that's the weakest part for the big island. Same thing with an earth, a hurricane, okay? Um, and it is hurricane season now. And the Big Island had, was hit, you know, recently by a cell, which wasn't a hurricane, it was a tropical storm, but that was a few years ago. But so they got to consider that too also. So a lot of these things we recommend have a dual hurricane, earthquake, earthquake hurricane benefit. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what they say, Dennis? Yeah. Mm. A stitch in time saves nine. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> Dennis Wong. Yeah, thank you. See, see Grant College. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Let's do it again. So